Chapter 1. It's a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. This is the first sentence out of my favorite book, Pride and Prejudice, written by Jane Austen. Just out of curiosity, who has ever heard of Jane Austen? Okay, a lot of you. So Jane was a writer 200 years ago. She wrote this beautiful book. And I really love it. And why is it still so relevant today? She talks about human interactions. She talks about connection. She gives you an insight how people interacted 200 years ago. I think it's amazing. But most importantly, she always creates a perfect match for her main characters. They always want to end up in a good match. At that time, it was a good, advantageous marriage. Now, through her work, over 200 years, she has inspired a lot of people, a lot of readers, a lot of writers. All her books have turned into movies, and even the Bridget Jones Diary is inspired on Pride and Prejudice, right? Now, why am I talking about Pride and Prejudice today? I think that she also inspired the writers of ISO 10993-1. I think it's a perfect matchmaker guide to, that tells you how to create a biologically safe relationship between a device and a patient. And if you don't believe that there is a link with Jane Austen and the standard, then there is absolutely a link today. Because on the 26th of April, 1764, Jane Austen's parents got married. And that's the beginning, actually, of this book. Otherwise, there was no book today. But I believe it is a matchmaker guidance that helps you to write a beautiful story. Now, how does ISO standard help you? First of all, you need your writers. The authors of your story are experts. It really is defined in the standard that you need biocomp expert, toxicologist that writes it. So it's not a single writer. You have several co-authors. And the ultimate goal is to help your patient. You're all, all of you are writing this story in the sake of the patient. The patient is not your lead character. It's not your main character of your story. That is the medical device, right? So you're going to tell a story about a device and you want to create that perfect relationship. It is not a love story where you have to balance between what your heart feels and what your brain tells you, like in my book. But it is a balance based on a risk assessment approach. You have to balance between the probability of occurrence of a harm and the severity of that harm. It's also non-fictional, what you're going to write, and this book is fictional. So you're really going to apply that in the ultimate end. So you really want to bring the device and the patient together. Another similarity is, of course, we all want the perfectly happy ending of the story, both for the patient in contact with the device as for the reader. So I will explain you how the ISO standards helps you to write that story into three different chapters. Three chapters are essential, and this is also how it helps you to build your story. Chapter one, plan. Everything starts with planning. You need to get to know your main character, your device. You describe your device, your character very well. Now you can use pictures. A picture says more than a thousand words. So put a picture in your first part and describe your device. Then you get to know how is it used, your device. How does it come in contact with the patient? Is it direct contact, indirect contact? Is it contacting blood, tissue, whatever? So get to know how it contacts your device. And of course, what is the contact duration? Short, long, that all depends. So you need to get to know at the beginning of your story, you get to know your device. That will help you to select a category. The standard helps you. And I now projected the standard, the table A1, where you really see here the categorization. So based on the category is just a part of the table, just for your information. Based on the category, you can see which endpoints you need to address. For the sake of today, I've simplified the table into this simple slide deck, where you see all the endpoints you need to evaluate for your story so that you ultimately can claim a biological safe relationship. And I've just indicated on the bottom whether animal testing are required or not. Uh, and the E stands for evaluate. So you need to evaluate, not test, evaluate every endpoint. When the E is between brackets, it's mean depending on the type of device, it's an endpoint to evaluate. 
But what you also see is that for physical and chemical information, it is, there stands an X. An X means this is a prerequisite to start your risk assessment. So you always start in your first chapter with planning, with gathering as much information as possible. What information do you need? You need to know what are the materials of constructions, which polymers are used, are there metals, is there glue involved? You need to know as much as possible. The more information you get, the better you can approach your risk assessment. How is your device manufactured? Which components come in contact with your device? Glue, chemicals, lubricants, detergents, whatever. How is it packaged? How is it sterilized? What is the configuration of your device? Is it a smooth texture? Is it more rigid? You all need to get to know that. And ideally, if there is historical information, that is really helpful. It helps you really to get to know your main character. Once you have that, you have a clear picture of how your device functions, and you have all this data. Now you really can start your risk assessment. You write that down, and you gather that all together, and with this com combined information, you're going to see, okay, which endpoints do I now need to evaluate? And you're going to select some tests. You're going to see what's the gap. Can I already claim that it's biologically safe or not? Which test do I need to do? There are different options. You have extractables and leachables testing, chemical characterization. You have the in vitro test, and you have animal testing. You need to select the appropriate test for your device. That not, does not, doesn't necessarily mean you have to do all of them. You have to make a good justification why you select certain tests. And that all combined is your first chapter, which is called the biological evaluation plan, where you really describe with expert input what's your device, and which tests are still lacking to perform a, a good judgment. So once you know how chapter one is built, you can then continue to chapter two. Chapter two, in chapter two, you're going to describe the tests. You're going to perform tests or you outsource those tests. And therefore, you have a lot of books you can get some inspiration. The inspiration, if you're doing extractables and leachable testing, that is all ISO 10993-18. What does it mean, getting to know your device? You want to know which components from your device will leach into your body and might be harmful. So you want to understand the chemistry of your device in order to create chemistry on a different level between the patient and your device. So you really want to understand that. Now today, Ant will talk about how you perform such a study just after this presentation. And Pete, later on, at the end of the morning session, will look into the future of this type of testing. What is essential in creating this chemistry and understanding this chemistry is to know which compounds migrate from your device. So you need good identification practices, which Wart will also be more than happy to explain you further in detail. Once you know it, you need to quantify. You need to make sure how much of these components will be coming off of your device. And that is also on the program today talked about with Dennis. Once you have or understand the chemistry, you know what, so good identification, good quantification, you can make an assessment, and there ISO 10993-17 helps you. It will help you to say, okay, some components are just of no concern, and you know that in your story, you're going towards the happily ever after. Some components might be of a concern, and you should assess whether or not it is really a concern. Am I going to end into a thriller, which you don't want to, or not? After the coffee break, we'll have an extended coffee break discussing ISO 10993, hosted by Lumilis with Sherry Parker as our uh, speaker of the day. And also tomorrow, an in-depth training is given about that. So it all fits well together in that chapter two. With that chemistry and a good tox assessment, you actually can evaluate for different endpoints already. So you don't necessarily have to do all the testing, so you can uh, evaluate carcinogenicity, genotox, and so on. So it's really a good approach in order to reduce other testing and definitely animal testing. However, in this chapter two, there is always the need for other endpoints to evaluate, definitely the big three, the cytotox test, the irritation, and the sensitization, all described in different chapters. What I wanted just to highlight is part two of your story is about getting the, done, the testing done and describe how it's done, so you have a lot of reports. It used to be the end of most of the stories, where we say, okay, here are the reports, 
our readers, the notified bodies and the competent authorities say, okay, this is it. No. ISO 10993 tells you to write a third chapter. That is to evaluate. You've made a plan, you've done the testing to address a certain gap, now you need to evaluate. So you have all your data, you have all your information all together. In the ideal scenario, all your tests pass. That's what you want. This is great, test done, it's perfect, happily ever after, this is what we want. You write it down and you have a perfect conclusion. Sometimes that's not the case. For instance, something that happens quite often or more often than we would like, some tests fail. For instance, a cytotox test. You have a cytotox failure. It doesn't mean that your device is failing. It means just that there is a potential for cytotoxicity. And I'm just referring back to Jane Austen to make my point. When Mr. Darcy and Ms. Bennett met each other for the first time, they didn't like each other. It was not a good impression. So it's like a bad first impression. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's not a good end result. It's a beautiful ending. No, what you now have to do, and it makes your story a little bit more exciting, you're going to find a root cause. So you're ending more in a detective story. With, with the gather of the experts, you will look what's the cause of this cytotox failure. What is the reason? And even if you don't find the cause, can you justify based on all the other data and on your expertise that the device is safe? So that is something that you then combine in that last chapter. You combine all the information back together and make a conclusion supported by your expert to say, okay, I have a perfect biologically safe relationship when this device will become in contact with the patient. So to summarize, you have three chapters, plan, test, evaluate. ISO 10993-1, guides you through this, how you should approach this, and gives you also other reference documents. With that approach, you are able to write a beautiful story. You will become the next Jane Austen, maybe. Perhaps not that uh, impacted, but still, for some people, it has a huge impact. And perhaps we still believe that ISO standard is not inspired by Jane Austen, but I know that the version is currently under revision. Some of you are perhaps actively involved. And that's why I want to make a suggestion that the first sentence would be, it's a truth universally acknowledged that a medical device in possession of a good biosafety evaluation must be in want of patients. Thank you.